Welcome to this episode of Now That's Something Good, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary in the everyday ordinary. Now here's your host, Sarah Good. Hey friend, welcome back. We're so glad that you are joining in with us today. We have a really special conversation today. We chat with our friend, Melanie Williams. We've known Melanie for quite a while and you'll hear more of the story today on the episode, but we chat about all kinds of things all over the place in typical something good fashion. I do want to give just a little disclaimer. If you are listening to this podcast episode today um, in the car or where little ears are around, I just want to give you a heads up. We're going to to talk about a really important subject about halfway through our conversation. We're going to talk about human trafficking and we dive in that a little bit. I would say this is probably like a PG rated episode. And so just want to give you a heads up one, if that is maybe, um, triggering to you or something you want to know about, or just making sure who's listening. Want to just always give you a heads up on that, that maybe you want to listen to it privately or when other people are not around. But it's an incredible conversation. We learned so much about a couple of different subjects that are really important to Melanie's heart and to our heart here at Now That's Something Good. So here we go. Here's my conversation with my friend, Melanie. Friends, today in the studio, I have my good friend, Melanie. Can you say hello, Melanie? Hello, Melanie. <laughs> hello, Melanie. We're so glad you're here. Melanie, let's just start off. Just introduce yourself a little bit to us. Tell us a little bit about who you are, your family, your life, and then we're going to go really deep, really quick all over the place. Okay, we will do. Um, just first and foremost, I'm a servant of the Lord, and I am wife to Brent, um, mom to Drake and Blair. I'm an interior designer and um, a life skills coach and mentor to human traffic survivors. And I have a ministry called Pursuit 3416 that brings awareness about trafficking to organizations. I love it. And we're going to talk about all that stuff. Okay. But Melanie, I have to start here. So <laughs> we're sitting in our podcast studio inside our house for you listening. Some of you might've heard this, but we have a little room off of our master bedroom that when we decided to do this, we were going to transition into a studio in an office. What you don't know is Melanie is the one that helped it look as beautiful and <laughs> intentional as it does. So Melanie, how does it feel to be sitting in the room that you helped I us know. design? I was wondering where this beautiful creation of design came from and <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's you. Uh, yeah no it's yeah it's different being the uh client per se you're, yeah. you're my client and yeah. now I'm your client I guess kind of right yeah I love yeah it. it's yeah it's comforting I like it well it's a really beautiful space and she helped take our ideas that are all over the place and somehow bring some order to it and hurt our heart and made it what it is and every time somebody walks in here their first thing is like oh my gosh this room is amazing awesome. and I'm like, it's Yay. my friend Melanie okay. <laughs> She did it down to the fun little Now That's Something Good podcast sign that we we love and all that. So, so we're excited. We told Melanie when we were designing this, we said, I cannot. She was on my very short list of people that I could not wait to get in here. And we just trust God with the timing. And now has been the time for Melanie to come. And we're excited. So Melanie, let's talk about this. Let's start talking about design and all of this a little bit. And how in the world did you get into the whole world of interior design? Okay. Why do you like it? All, all of the things. Okay, great. Um, so... From the time I was a really little kid, I always created stuff. I used to make barrettes and sell them when I was like 10 years old. And um, then as I got older, my dad had a construction company and I thought, I, he would talk to me about architecture and I thought, I'm going to be an architect. Um, That's great. So I kind of always had that in the back of my head. And in 10th grade, I took my first drafting class in um, high school okay. and I realized really quickly that um, I should not be an architect. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes that's good to learn not what not to do. <laughs> there just was, you know, some math and just all <laughs> kinds of uh, technical stuff about it that just I was not gifted with. Yeah. Um, so then I switched to, I moved out of that and switched to an interior design class. Okay. And um, and I guess that's where I was meant to be because I didn't even know it. We had in our high school, in my school district as a kid, there was something called um, the Research and Development Forum. Okay. And I always kind of thought it was for science nerds. Sorry. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and um, I did not realize that um, designs and floor plans and whatnot also were entered. And I did not know my 
teacher had entered one of my floor plans and um, design plans, and I won the whole thing. And I guess and won the grand award, and I thought, okay, I guess maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. So um, yeah, so that's how it kind of started, and um, from that. I think I was probably the only 16 year old that for my birthday, I requested to have white carpet installed in my bedroom. That was my present so that I could design it to be black and white. That's um, amazing. Yeah. It was the eighties and now black and white is back. So I love it. Well, Melanie, I said, like, do you have yeah. a picture of that bedroom somewhere? Because oh yeah, definitely. We love I'll to connect like pictures that. to the stories and I feel like we're going to need to see that. Yeah. And that's amazing. I did not know that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So design's just kind of always been in my life. And, yeah. um, then, you know, it kind of took a turn. I was going to college for interior design to get okay. my degree and started working as a part-time human resource assistant. Um, by the time I finished my degree, I had sort of been working my way up the corporate ladder and could not turn down the salary okay, um, to yeah. go to interior design full time. So I just did it <laughs> you on mean the a side. creative job doesn't right? pay that much? <laughs> what? <laughs> nope. <laughs> I wish it did. Um, so anyway, I ended up becoming a human resource manager for many years and just okay. doing small design jobs on the side. Yeah. And um, that's kind of the history of it. I love it. So when... That's great. Okay. I remember you talking about the human resource part. And then, so Melanie, like I said, obviously we've known each other for a little while. Yes. We, we get the privilege to go to church together. Yes. And then she not only helped design our podcast studio, she helped us with our master bedroom, master bathroom, mm-hmm. our whole house. She's just helping us with <laughs> everything because we need the help. Um, and so I know some of your story, but some of this I don't know, mm-hmm. which is always fun for me to learn new things too. So what kind of schooling do you need to become, I mean, obviously with creative world, okay. anybody can do anything right. all the time, which is kind of fun, but you yeah. did go. Do, yeah, you do need a, f- you don't need it. I take that back. Um, interior designers are generally have a bachelor of arts degree okay. and, um, you might hear the term interior decorator. Yes. Interior okay. decorator tends to be, um, someone without a degree, but just has a wonderful gift and is yeah. able to share their gift and decorate homes okay. and whatnot. So, um, Generally, if you're an interior designer, you have um, a Bachelor of Arts degree in interior design. Okay. So, yeah. So, talk a little bit. So, you spent all this time in human resources. Yes. Kind of doing it on the side. Yes. You, let me start here. You have a lot of creative talents, like not only mm-hmm. just with the design, but you do make a lot of things. Do you want to just... I'm going to make you tell us. Because <laughs> oh, it's gosh. so interesting. Like, yeah. well, what I think of most, okay. what I've had most, is the mosaics that you oh, would do. Oh, yes. Of course. Like, okay. So, you've had these sides businesses doing I have. different yes, creative absolutely. things too, yeah. that all fall in the design world. Uh-huh. But can you just right. tell us a little bit about those? Yeah. I think it's fun. Absolutely. I just, I don't know. I can't just sit around and do nothing. Yeah. I, I have to create. And like I said, from a child, I had to create. I had to. It's just something I was drawn to. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, for a period after I left human resources, I was able to have the opportunity to work just part-time and be home with the kids. And so that's when, um, I started, um, a business that I literally did mosaic crosses for boutiques all over North America and yeah. also Swarovski crystal bows for pet boutiques and children's boutiques I along with love that. that. Okay. Yeah. And that was for about 10 years, but I'd still like always did, you know, these interior design jobs on the side yeah. and, and had this business. And, um, and yeah, so gosh, I just, I love to create and, yeah. um, yeah, I don't know. I love that you, are so creative because I was actually just thinking today about just all creative people. Mm -hmm. And and I believe that everybody has a creative side Mm -hmm. because God is creative and him in us comes out. Absolutely. We have no other choice. It just Mm -hmm. looks really different for everybody, but truly creative people, like how you just have an eye, you, Mm -hmm. you pull things together. That's like, I would, I would never see that. Like, and I, you know, I have decent instincts on things, but I'm not that creative. Right. And so talk to me just for a little bit, yeah. like what you've learned about God okay. through creativity and how he's right. made you and how you see things. Yeah. Um, no, I'm so glad you asked because I think this is one way that all of us can glorify God, yes. whether it be in our hobbies, our jobs, our everyday life, running yeah. errands and running kids. But I know that these gifts are truly from Him. Mm -hmm. And you might think, oh, it's such a silly gift. How on earth can you glorify God if you are a designer or 
your hobby is playing the harmonica or something, yeah, but I yeah. promise you can. And yeah. so, um, since that's what we are here for is to glorify God, I've just have found ways to do it. And so in my job, for instance, with interior design, um, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. These gifts he does, I will say, give me these odd gifts where <laughs> <laughs> I can just look at something and know what it needs. Yeah. And, um, so how can I glorify him when I going through that experience. Yeah. Um, so in my job, I do it a couple ways. And one way is to just serve at my church by mm. offering my design services yes. and even um, putting in the labor if needed, mm. hands-on projects to see them through completion. Yeah. And then, um, so that's one way I do it. And then the other way I do it is I want to honor my clients that have committed to um, just growing and being generous with God's kingdom. And sometimes when you've done that and you're tithing and you're generous with God's kingdom, you don't always have the funds to beautify your home, but yeah. you want updates and you want remodeling like everybody yeah. just to be comfortable in your home. And so I honor those clients with um, a discounted design rate. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, yeah. And then of course, um, while I'm on the job, one, a lot of amazing discussions and conversations yeah. come out yeah. of, um, why I offer that and yeah. just the faith behind it. Yeah. Yeah. So I just believe we can glorify him no matter what. And just don't think that your job or your gift or your hobby is silly because pray about it and he will show you how to use it for his glory. I love that so much, Melanie. So I want to come back to that in a second, but we have been the benefactor of what Melanie is talking about and how she has helped mm-hmm. us. And the cool thing is Melanie also, and I have a relationship through the stuff at the church yes. too. And so we've been able to work on a lot of projects and yeah. I think we work fairly well yeah, together with absolutely. all this stuff. <laughs> like she might disagree. I won't She's, make her disagree. No, pocket, I but. have to cut in and say <laughs> literally one of the easiest clients okay. I've ever had in my life. Oh, amazing, good. amazing that's, to work with. Well, I didn't yeah. ask you at the same time. I nope. appreciate it. But you are really good about, you do have such just a heart for the kingdom and mm-hmm. helping people and have spent a ton of hours behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. And I love this because what you're talking about um, in general is with design, someone might think, like you said, like, well, yeah. that, I hope no one would say it's silly. It's more of us thinking like, right. well, how do I use but this? But yeah, how do you use it? Yeah. But design mm-hmm. plays a really big deal into what we see and what we feel, exactly. how we ex- uh, experience a space. Yes. Um, and so would you just for a little bit mm-hmm. talk about that too, why yeah. design is so important and why we, um, like Melly, why do we, why are we so receptive to it? Like okay. why does our body have such a right. heart for that and yeah. want, want it and feel better in spaces that are well yeah. designed? Well, there's been a lot of scientific studies. I'm sure you've heard about just like how color color, um, reaches yes. us and changes our moods and whatnot. Yeah. And so, um, if we just kind of go from that and proceed forward, um, it's also just design kind of stems from that. Obviously we use a lot of color. We use a lot of texture and what I wanted, or my goal was when I'm helping do design projects at church and whatnot, um, we need to create a space that makes people feel welcome Mm -hmm. and comfortable and inviting. And in conversations I've had with a lot of friends and even um, secular friends have said, I've literally walked into a church and um, I walked out because they weren't comfortable. They didn't like the surroundings. Um, And so if I can help just... Make anyone who's just maybe testing out churches mm-hmm. or whatnot. I we probably shouldn't say that. That's all right. No, we well, do. Are, we all do that. People right? do that. Church you know? shopping yeah, a little church bit. Shopping. We're saying that's part of it. Yeah, but if if I can help so that you walk in and you feel just a sense of comfort. Yeah. At least that will get you through the door and maybe it will get you to walk over to those worship doors and have a seat. Mm-hmm. And then the rest is from the pulpit and from yeah. the Lord. Yeah. But if I could help in any way, shape, or form to at least give you a bit of comfort Mm -hmm. um, to make you proceed into those worship doors, then... then I've done my job. That's my goal. So yeah. I love that. 
Well, that's part of the reason why Melanie, I've got gotten along so well too, mm-hmm. is I have a huge belief in that in every kind of space. Like it just mm-hmm. helps you. And, it does. And again, there is a spiritual part to things and God right. and the Holy Spirit trump all of those things, Absolutely. but it definitely can help. And we want people, whether it's coming into a church, to our home, into a ministry building, to our mm-hmm. restaurant, wherever, yeah. to feel like they can take a breath yes. there and that it feels welcoming and peaceful or right. whatever the vibe is that you're trying to create. Yes. And designed definitely does that. So Melly, I want to ask you just a couple of really practical questions because okay. people, everybody we're listening to probably yeah. have some space that they, yeah. an apartment, a home, some other spaces, maybe they have an office. Yeah. Like what are some of just the really easy, practical things okay. people can do to kind of like elevate a space? Absolutely. Um, just to make okay. it feel like that or how yeah. do they even decide what it needs to feel like, I guess too. Like, yeah. I mean, obviously the first thing they should do is do some research on whether it be just social, social media. Yeah. Yeah. apps, um, Pinterest and whatnot yeah. has, is such Love a great Pinterest. resource. <laughs> I wish I didn't, but I did. Right. I know. <laughs> um, so that way, even when I'm working with a client and I'm trying to figure out what their design style is, yeah. um, I might show them or direct them to those, um, forms and ask, you know, okay, what's appealing to you? So let's, so first they need to do that. They need yeah. to figure out what speaks to me, what, you know, what am I attracted to? Is yeah. it modern? Is it organic? Is it farmhouse? What is it? Yeah. Um, so once you start there, then gosh, just to easily and cheaply elevate your space, paint, paint the space, brighten it up. Yeah. Um, you want to, of course, um, try to go with, you know, colors that are going to last mm-hmm. and have that combination of being on trend, but will last yeah. for a while. So you don't have to do this every three years. <laughs> um, and then flooring, um, even if you can't afford to replace with expensive hardwood floors or, or whatnot, you can even cover a laminate floor or, um, with just like those peel and stick tiles that are beautiful patterns. And yeah. there are so many easy, cheap ways to just elevate your style yeah. and, um, honestly just research it and then start slow and easy. And then remember layers, layering is big in design. It's kind of how you make a place feel finished. Okay. So you need layers and a lot of, or I should say some of my clients are comfortable with, you know, I only like this color and they don't want to mix a certain colors, but, um, if you, you just need to sort of be open to that because yeah. it's going to make it feel just complete. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like one of the things I've learned about design is they'll tell you like, <laughs> I'm not a fashion expert by any means, but they will tell you, often people tell you like, mm. try things on that you maybe wouldn't always gravitate to because sometimes <laughs> you're surprised. Yes. Is the same thing true in design too? Absolutely. That sometimes you're like, I would yeah. never do that, but then you see it and you're like, right. oh my goodness, that's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. You should just you know, gosh, even if you, if there's some products or some design items that you want to buy, as long as you can return them, yeah. why not put it in your space for a couple yeah. of days, feel it out. And, um, you might surprise yourself that you oh. like a whole design you never even thought you would. And I love that. Yeah. I've done that with a lot of clients and, um, and I would say nine times out of 10, after they sit on it for a few days, yeah. they accept it and love it. Yeah. So, so Melanie, since we are a little practical on design stuff, yeah. um, are there any things like right now that you're like, please don't do that design wise <laughs> that you're like, Hey, yeah. like I know yeah. you should love it. And I'm sure there's a yeah. part of design and creativity. Like, yeah. You love it. You don't need to justify it always to somebody else. True. But there are a few true. things that you're like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is on its way out. Don't do it anymore. Right. Or, Please yeah. just, yeah, for the sake of your well-being Definitely. and everybody else's, don't do this in your home. <laughs> or do you have a like, couple examples? Yeah. What would you say? Give us a little bit of free advice okay. if you don't mind. Help all Yeah, of us. I have a couple. So um, absolutely love the farmhouse um, trend that yes. has been on for quite a few years. But what you need to do now is anything with like X's. Like the yes. barn doors that have X's or people were a lot of um, coffee tables had that sort of X design mm-hmm. that initially comes from farmhouse. Um, it's, it's time to sort of move past that. You can keep farmhouse, absolutely ship lap stems from that and keep that, but you need to now incorporate it with organic pieces okay. instead of tons of, um, barn looking design. Yeah. So, yeah. um, stay away from that or, or be, I should say rather lighten up on it. Okay. Okay. One item with sort of that X barn design in your home is fine. Not 
three or four or five okay. or more. That's so good. yeah, just sort of limit it. Um, also there is, I don't want to say the name of the store. There is a specific store that a lot of ladies love to shop at <laughs> and it still has, um, metal, um, <laughs> wall art and, and stuff okay. like that. Yeah. And I'm just going to say, you know, <laughs> stay away really from that. This is a really popular store, isn't it, Melanie? <laughs> store. Okay. Yeah. So, um, just, you know, stay away from that. And it's, yeah. it's so, it's super easy to kind of, um, know what's on trend nowadays. There's so many design shows out there and yeah. HGTV and yeah. discovery and whatnot. So, if you um, <laughs> have time and can sort of watch those, you can get a really good idea yeah. of what just isn't working anymore. Will won't so. let me watch those shows, Melanie, because he gets mad. He's I'm like, we got to change. We want to redo everything. House. I know. And he's like, Sarah, seriously, like yeah. we can only do so much. No. But now we have Melanie, and yeah. she helps us, so it works yeah, out better. She's absolutely. my show that I. Yeah. Okay. Love so it. this is another just frivolous question okay. that has nothing to yeah. do, but it's important. Like, it's yeah. Important. So, okay. Color, paint color. I love that okay. you said paint. Cause like, many yeah, people say, like one. it's one of the easiest things. Mm-hmm. And yes, it's a big deal to paint, but like yeah. it really doesn't take that much time all Mm-mm. things considered and it can be repainted. So if you yes. can put a color on the wall and you're yes. like, I hate it. You can redo it. Right. It's fairly inexpensive. Right. So, but we've been going through this whole like gray right. and all that, but now okay. it's kind of shifting it again is. It is. and some of the neutrals are coming back. They are. But I have a phobia mm-hmm. to like all the creams and tans yeah. from like 15, oh, 20 here. years ago when it was. Right. So like, yeah. can you just talk about that yes. for a minute, Melly? Like, oh, so goodness. What, when we're saying neutrals, one, right. what does that really mean? Because I think okay. I'm probably not the only one that sometimes is like, right. well, what really is a neutral okay. and what does that mean? Okay. And then yeah. our, our beige is real. like, what do we right. do? They like, are, what does it look like? <gasps> so the sort of the cool grays are sort of trending out. You can absolutely, if you have cool gray in your home, you can make it work. You can make it work by bringing in those organic pieces like the texture, the wicker baskets, okay. the rattan furniture. Yes. And you can um, even combine that with cognac and camel furniture and sofas yep. and chairs and, and just accent pieces. And you can make your cool gray work. So I don't want everybody to run out and repaint their cool gray home. Yeah. Okay. But like I told you last week, I needed my whole bottom <laughs> right. floor is like cool gray. Yeah. I'm like, we got to repaint it. Melanie. Yeah. But I mean, if it's something that you have time and it's really in your heart to go ahead and change the color, what yeah. the on-trend color neutrals are a grayish, okay, which yes. is a nice combination of gray and beige I, and, um, it's warmer colors. So, okay. um, the new neutrals are, um, Goodness, they're the warmer whites and creams. Okay. Um, they are the warmer grays with the grays in it. And then, yeah. of course, um, sort of the trending colors are the terracottas. And yes. there's a new style of sage that has come out. Um, I certainly don't want people to go back to everybody had like pottery barn green in their homes yeah. for many we years. Have that, that, we have a big tall slant. That's, I'm pointing, you can't see, yeah. but in our front room, when you walk in, there's like, yeah. sl- when we moved in this house, yeah. it was that green right. color. Very popular for a yes. long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the new neutrals, of course, gray, um, yeah. Creams. You just don't, when you look at creams and whites, yeah, what you want to you... stay away from is yellow undertones. Okay. Don't go that direction. You can tell when it has a beigey undertone. You uh-huh. want to go with that. Okay. Because that's going to age better than something with like a yellow undertone. Yeah. So see, that's good note. Cause I think what yeah. I always picture in my head yeah. is the yellow undertones <laughs> because our bedroom mm-hmm. before it used to be this color yeah. that I don't know why anybody ever thought it was good because Will and I would say, excuse me, people listening, I'm sorry what I'm about ready to say, but it looked like baby poop yes. like color uh-huh. that like it right. was that kind of yeah. yellowy brown. Yes. I don't even know. Yeah. And so I looked at it for so long. I think I'm just petrified now of like with anything you. Yeah. close to that. Yeah. But also lighting. So lighting makes a massive difference. And if you just change your light bulbs from the light bulbs you've had for years and years to a daylight light bulb, yes. um, I promise you the colors in your home will change. And even walls that looked like they had a little yellow in them yeah. will start to look white. Yes. So um, test out some different light bulbs and watch how your house changes. Okay. I love that because I can attest that my you told <laughs> yes, me that. And we've I done did. it several places. And I'm like, it's amazing. So I'm laughing, yeah. smiling while she's telling this. I'm like, yeah. I heard her. We've gotten to have yes. this conversation several times. Yeah. It really does. And light bulbs are not that expensive. No. That's an easy fix. And right. worth trying before you go... 
do all this other exactly. stuff. Exactly. Like, right? Just to go, what is it? You did that right. for our little bathroom down there. It's right. kind of an older color, purple. Mm-hmm. We need to change yeah, that at some point. Change that. But yeah. changing the light really made a it made a yeah. big difference. I'm like, oh, I don't. Okay, it's not as bad now. Yeah, everything goes from having this yellow hue and cast on it. Yeah. To suddenly, yeah, brighter, whiter, cleaner. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So, Melanie, so. one of my other things that I just love about you in design, because I think there's a misconception mm-hmm. that sometimes designers or design things all come with a very, very hefty price oh, tag. Oh, right. Now, yes. of course, I'm sure there, like, <laughs> yes, there are ways there are. to do that. And yeah. if you want to yeah. spend a lot of yeah. money, you easily sure. could. Yes. And I'm sure you actually would probably love when like yeah. <laughs> clients that come Absolutely. are like, yeah, just got yeah. all this money. You're like, okay, great. Right. Um, but most of us probably don't have a ton of money sitting right. around. Right. And one of the things I love about you is you are really great yeah. um, about finding ways to save money. On yeah. It, and you're really great about just transforming things and taking pieces mm-hmm. you have and working them. It's amazing. Yeah. And again, I don't want you to give all of your secrets away because I also yeah. tell you, like, if you're listening in your St. Charles area, you yeah. just need to yeah. come find Melanie and yeah. have her because Absolutely. I will, I'm not going to make you make a plug for it, but I will yeah. say it helped us so much to have the help because mm-hmm. Will and I are very, we have good instincts, mm-hmm. but to pull it all together. And Will and I are super busy as Melanie yeah. was about to say, like we don't, and yeah. Melanie did like the shopping and found the stuff and showed mm-hmm. us. And it just, it was yeah. a huge help and helped us very quickly transform a space for us. Right. It was the right thing right. to do. That Absolutely. And we had budget to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, not everybody always can, right. but if you do, I would highly vote for find a designer, have them right. help you. If yeah. you're in this area, reach out to my friend yes. Melanie. She's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. But I know this, what are some easy things that people can do okay. sometimes that maybe they're tempted to spend more money on okay. than they need to or okay. anything around that? Yeah. Well, like, Goodness gracious. There are so many. So uh, Traditionally, interior designers would go to showrooms, um, and I still okay. work with showrooms. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Um, however, nowadays, because of the internet and because of big box stores and whatnot, you can literally find um, um, excuse me, dupes. Basically, is okay, what we yeah. call them. So at showrooms. Um, I'll take a client in and most of the furniture is $9,000 couches, $15,000 coffee tables, and yeah. it's insane. But you can almost always find a dupe of some sort yeah. online. So of course, um, I'm just, I won't promote the names. I'll just yeah, say, you yeah. know, do your research. I'll do, I'll, I will give one tip that um, is really simple. Um, so go to your search bar on the internet mm-hmm. and go ahead and put in specifically what you're looking for. So let's say you want modern organic side chair, type that in and then hit the shopping tab. Yes. And then a load of that style of chair will pop up and it will have, of course, the link and the options to purchase it. So, um, Definitely need to read reviews when you're yes. buying online. Okay. And hopefully you want to make sure that there's a return policy. Yes. But you literally can go from the nine thousand dollar couch that is beautiful and fantastic at the showroom yeah. to a fifteen hundred dollar dupe um, just from doing a little bit of computer work. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Are there any things and just clarify because I think sometimes people hear dupes and they think okay. it's all cheap. That's oh, not no. necessarily yeah, absolutely can you just not. dispel yeah. that myth I will. a little bit for people uh, yeah. because I think that's part of like oh, 100%. Well, it's not gonna last, yeah. you know, yeah. as long or whatever. So dupe obviously is short for duplicate. Yeah. And so what we're doing is trying to find a similar item looks ex- you know, as close as possible to the item that you absolutely love yeah. but is less expensive. And could you get a cheap, not well-constructed item, a hundred percent. That's where reviews come into play. Mm -hmm. And I will give everybody a tip on reviews. Nowadays, um, even on Amazon and whatnot, tips are either paid or um, product is exchanged Mm -hmm. and whatnot. So just look for truth in the review. When yeah. people are saying very personal items like, you know, my husband fell down while he was putting up my ladder and, you know, <laughs> yeah. then you can kind of get a feel for the truthful uh-huh. reviews versus the sort of just statement reviews. Yeah. Once you weed, the, weed out the reviews, um, then 
really read into those reviews. And that's where you're going to find out if the product is good. So the couch was sturdy. It was comfortable. The pillows did not flatten. Um, you're looking just for people sharing their real life experiences and that will make you more comfortable to purchase online. And it, it sort of confirms that, um, this item, for instance, that you may be saving $10,000 on because you're getting, you're trying to find this dupe, then, um, you're suddenly affirmed that, yeah. um, it's good quality and, um, I don't have to pay nine, $10,000 for yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So. I love that. Well, yeah. you've helped us with a lot of things in our house and it's so far it's all, uh, holding up. It's okay. Been great. Awesome. We read Yay. reviews. We're all yes. good. And, okay. Yeah. And I love it. And it's like, if you don't have to spend the money all the time, why, or yeah. you can invest it in somewhere else, like, right. Your other part right. of your budget, it's like, right. well, or just, I'm sure deciding what's most important 100%, to you. hundred percent. You know, bathrooms and kitchens are very expensive. Yeah. So if you just want to make some quick updates to your living room and your bedroom and whatnot, um, do it the easy way, do some research and what, and then, um, invest that money in, countertops and yes. cabinets and yes. um, vessel tubs and s- beautiful walk-in showers. Yes. Yeah. yeah, We're saying that from experience because some of that's in my house right now. <laughs> I love it. Right. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Yeah. I have one more design question. Then okay. we're going to make a hard shift to awesome. something else. Okay. Um, can we just talk about wallpaper, Melanie? Ah. Like, so that's another thing I feel like people are like, it's all pretty. back in, which is it cool. Is. And they make really pretty patterns. But like, yes. what do we do? Is that, do you okay. recommend wallpaper? No. Yes. Like what, what do people I do? I do. Help I, us out. Goodness. I love wallpaper. It just, I, I just love it. Okay. So the new wallpaper obviously is the peel and stick and everybody yes. will see that at the big box stores. And, um, so if you feel like you can manage that skill. It's it's not <gasps> difficult. It can be tedious getting everything lined up and equal and level. Yeah. But once you sort of conquer that part of it, then it's sort of easy peasy and you can finish the job and um, you have like a beautiful... And I... I hate to say statement wall because statement walls aren't really a thing anymore. Uh, um, so I, I will it. say you just have um, a beautiful visual. Yeah. Um, so I highly recommend it. I do recommend the peel and stick because I do have experience being in design yeah. for 30 years, <laughs> um, removing the wallpaper that used to be glued to walls. I think that's why everybody cringes. Like everybody <laughs> has to have a story of like pulling yeah. off like a little board, like yeah. you used to do the borders yeah. around or the little... Absolutely. It, none of us want to go back there. No, it is so much work to... And I, I will say this. So if it depends on the home and whatnot that I'm designing. Yeah. And some homes just, just call for the expensive traditional wallpaper mm-hmm. that a professional glues down. Yeah. Um, and you just have to love it to know it's going to be there for a while. Yeah. So absolutely. Sometimes a situation calls for that. Okay. But I would say for the most part, you can get away if you can find the pattern and the colors that you love yeah. with the peel and stick rolls that are everywhere nowadays. I love it. Yeah. Well, thank you for answering my burning yeah. question about wallpaper. <laughs> okay. I know everybody listening had the yes. same question and wanted to know. No. Good. <laughs> Good. Well, Melanie, so all of this stuff I know interweaves with your whole story, all the yeah. creative, because you can't really separate yourself from mm-hmm. it, which I love. Yeah. Uh, but you have a really other part of your story mm-hmm. and your passions and where God has gifted you that you get to work on. You said it on the front end, mm-hmm. um, but you get to do a lot of work where you mentor mm-hmm. and help and teach and educate um, in the world of human trafficking. Yes. And so why don't you start here? Can you just tell us, start with what human trafficking kind of is, and then we'll jump. I want to hear why, how you got into it, and then we'll pigeonhole all over the place. Yeah, sounds good. So um, human trafficking is an umbrella term for two types of trafficking, sex trafficking and labor trafficking. Mm -hmm. And I'll give the quick and easy definition so you all remember it. Sex trafficking is when a person is obtained for through fraud, coercion, and manipulation for sex acts. Okay. Then labor trafficking is when a person is obtained to be used for forced labor. And an example with that would be a migrant farm worker who is forced to work outside all day in the heat, Mm -hmm. making little or no money simply to pick our fruits and vegetables Mm -hmm. that we eat. So that's one example, but there are many. And we're going to go back and talk all about that because I think both of those two types Mm -hmm. are really important to talk about and have some education on. Yeah. Amelia, tell us, like, 
how did you get yeah. involved in this world? Like, what, crazy. why are you spending a lot? You spend a lot of your time yeah. and heart and God really laid it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a part of who you are. They're yeah. kind of separating it out from right. what you talk about. But like, how, how did that happen? Yeah. It was, it's purely from the Lord. Um, wow. About eight years ago, I was, I, I think I was watching a documentary and I was learning about human trafficking and it just blew my mind. And, um, at the same time, a couple crazy things happened. I had I started having a, a literal physical pull in my chest, mm. and it was it was pulling me that I I have to help. I don't know how. I don't know what I'm mm-hmm. going to do, but I had to. It yeah. just it just was inside me, literally pulling me in that direction. And during that time, um, mysteriously, all kinds of stuff started coming across my desk. Yeah. I got, I got real mail on trafficking. I got mm. emails on trafficking. I got, I found it on social media. It just, there's no explanation. It just is something that the Lord needed me in. And mm-hmm. so he put that in me. Um, so I went ahead and continued researching with all the information I was provided yeah. and came across an organization called The Covering House. Okay. I um, started volunteering for them in just basic volunteer ways, um, lots of fundraisers, lots of projects and yeah. stuff. And The Covering House, what they are, they have a restoration home for minors who have been through human trafficking. And then they also have community-based services where for adults and for people who do not live in the restoration home, they offer services to free them from trafficking as well. Um, So I was just doing volunteer work for a a year or two. And then that poll came back and I heard the Lord say, um, I gave you a lot of gifts and you need to pull them together and help the kids. Hmm. So that's what I did. Love that. No, yeah. 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 I just, I pulled together all my life experiences and my, whether it be from work and jobs and whatnot in life and created a curriculum um, for the covering house. I eventually then started um, teaching life skills. And my main goal is to help them acclimate back to society in a God honoring way. Yeah, That's the hope. Um, Then I eventually became a mentor as well for girls that have graduated from the program and live locally. Okay. Yeah. So once a week I am either at the house doing life skills, or I'm with a mentee mentoring them. Okay. I love that. Yeah. Um, and the covering house is local here to, is it, is it, is it is anywhere local. else or is it just a local, like it's, they have no, other branches? They do not. It okay. is just local. Um, I, the, the office is in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. Uh, obviously we don't say where the restoration yes. home yes. is. Yep. Um, yeah, but so they were just they were the main organization that I work with. And then there are various other ministries and whatnot that yeah. I help with as needed. Yeah. yeah. So I want to tell all of you guys listening, we're going to, Melanie's going to share some more things here and we're going to talk about it. We are going to list a lot of this stuff in the show notes so that you can find resources. And so some of the things that Melanie's going to talk about, um, she might quickly say, or might just say, we'll put it in the show notes and we'll make sure to have a lot of different resources for people. But Melanie, this is a really hard subject yes. and it gets talked about in a lot of different, sometimes it's not talked about enough mm-hmm. in the last couple of years it has seemed to surface even more in the news and all kinds of things. And there's a lot of misinformation too about some of it. Could you just, again, I know you explain this, but just give us some overarching information about just whatever you want to share. Yeah. Um, I believe the reason it's become more and more publicly aware Mm -hmm. is because it's a $150 billion industry. It is the second most profitable industry in the world, which is disgusting. Yes, absolutely. And um, America is guilty of that as Mm -hmm. well. They offer at least $35 billion, and America is the number one um, user of child pornography, Mm. which is trafficking. These children are trafficked. Yeah. So, um, unfortunately that's why we we're hearing about it so much. Mm -hmm. Then the misconceptions, um, many years people saw the movie taken with Liam Neeson and it immediately put in everybody's head that this only happened in other countries and people were kidnapped and Mm -hmm. stolen. And does that happen? Absolutely. But it is a minimal percentage. Okay. Um, As for America, the number one way that 
teens are getting trafficked is through online social media manipulation. Yeah. So they are literally um, a pimp will befriend them, act like they are their age, possibly become mm-hmm. their best friend, become their boyfriend or girlfriend through never meeting them. And then they yeah. build trust. And then yeah. they, from that way forward, they groom them and then eventually meet and start trafficking them. Another misconception is that you are um, chained to a bed in a house or, or whatnot. Mm-hmm. No, a lot of these um, people, kids and people that are in this have freedoms, but they are so manipulated and um, and unfortunately so beat down from their their pimps and their, what they think is their boyfriends and girlfriends and whatnot, that um, they just do what they say. And I have experienced um, a girl that I've worked with she was trafficked right in her home while her parents were at work. So this 100%, um, you can still go to school every day as Mm -hmm. a teenager and then be trafficked at night or on weekends. Um, Any form of someone that is manipulating you, Mm -hmm. coercing you into sex acts is trafficking. Okay. So there's a couple misconceptions. Yeah, no, that's good. Mm -hmm. And I know that this is a really heavy subject and oftentimes... We either want to lean in and hear more, or we just kind of want to put our hands over our ears and go, yeah. I know it happens, but I don't know what to do. And so yeah. I think it's a really important conversation. Part of the yeah. reason my heart for wanting you to come in, because mm-hmm. you, you have such a great way of talking about it. Um, and so let me come back a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you said that it is very, very prevalent here in America. Yes. And I feel like one of the misconceptions, like you said, is we don't believe it's here. And the conversation you've had, and Melanie shares a lot of resources. She's been teaching mm-hmm. courses. We're going to come back to your ministry that you're starting mm-hmm. out okay. of this um, to, to bring awareness and education right. is that is what you said, that it affects everywhere and it's, it's it all the time all, everywhere. Like right. it's, you're not exempt from it and you probably, it's probably closer to right. us than we think, which is right. scary to think about. Right. Um, but it's true. Mm-hmm. And part of how we help the problem is educate ourselves and bring yes. awareness. So can you just talk a little bit again, our heart in sharing all this is not okay. to scare anybody, right? but to have wisdom and be aware and know what to look for so that you can help your people closest yes. to you and help other people. Right. But can you talk a little bit about when you say it is mm-hmm. <laughs> closer by, yes. can you either just share some stories yeah. or some other things that just yeah, help I can. people really realize how serious this is? Okay. We'll do. Um, so I will, I do want to just start out with one way you all can help is pray. Mm. This yes. pray for um, the freedom from this enslavement mm-hmm. and pray for the Lord to open your eyes so that That's you good. can start to watch and and possibly help others. Mm-hmm. And um, I'll provide some tips to um, the podcast that will offer different, different tips that you can That's help good. and different things you can watch for. Um, yeah. I won't list them all because there are a lot. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of want to start out that way. So if you guys have an opportunity to look and um, read over those tips, it would it would truly be helpful. Yeah. Um, but how, what it looks like in America or what yeah. it looks like in your city, it is closer than you think. Um, one, I'll make one statement and then, and it's, it's kind of sad, but if you have ever seen pornography, mm-hmm. ever come across it, even a glimpse of it, yeah. then you have witnessed um, a trafficked person. Yeah. So um, pornography is full of trafficked people. Yeah. So I just kind of want to put that out there. Mm-hmm. But then back to our cities and whatnot, the girls that I mentor um, are all local and they're either in Missouri um, or some surrounding states, yeah. Iowa, Kansas, Indiana. Okay. Um, so just know that these are just everyday young teenagers that were manipulated through a relationship, what yeah. they thought was a relationship, or again, online on a, an app or social media. Yeah. Um, there are a few years ago at our local Target, there was a woman, um, she would have been a pimp that had been trafficked as a young person and then sort of aged out of it and became a pimp. Um, What happens? You think, why didn't they just leave? And, you know, but they see how lucrative it is. Mm -hmm. And um, pimps make $150,000 to $200,000 per child. 
Ooh. a year. So they see the the lucrative. It's also been the only life they know. Yeah. And they become a pimp themselves. And so a few years ago, there was a woman who, again, would have been a pimp, and she was recruiting girls at Target. And she was doing this. This is another very common way. So not just on social media, but also through job offers. So she would talk to, start talking to young girls and tell them, you know, how pretty they were and yeah. how she works with modeling contracts. And um, that is also a very popular way to get it, um, yeah. to get sort of swooped up into this mess. Okay. Um, so we definitely want to watch out for that. Um, I always... I'll just give another tip since yeah, a lot of us do. run yeah. so many errands and are at yeah. the big stores constantly picking up stuff and grocery shopping. Just keep your eyes open. And I mentioned earlier, just pray for that so that you can truly see it. I know we are looking at our list and we're busy, but um, look around. And if you see people without carts, or maybe they just have two items in their cart, but they keep perusing the mm -hmm. aisles, mm -hmm. they are looking. They're probably looking for yeah. kids or, or vulnerable looking people to recruit yeah. into this. And they're going to do it with all kinds of wonderful um, opportunity offers of jobs and modeling and acting and all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. So let me start he here because there's two sets okay. of questions. Yes. You. So what's your time out? What do we do mm -hmm. if we see, okay. So they're okay. partly, yeah. well, what else should we be looking for on a, a bigger scale? If we think somebody is a pimp or okay. somebody is potentially trafficked and there's just a situation and our spidey senses kind of go off and you're like, something's not right, right here. Okay. What things would we be looking for, for that? And then if we see it, like if we notice somebody asks Right, us or somebody close to us, or we hear like, no, she's asking and talking about this modeling job. Is there right. anything that we should do? Absolutely. One, and yes. What is it? Okay. <laughs> like help us no, with just that. That is so good. Um, they, the general um, direction is not to get involved. Okay. So if if your first act is to call nine one one, that's fine. Okay. You can call nine one one, and you can just say exactly what you saw. Yeah. Um. I believe there could be a trafficking situation going on. I'm at this store. Yeah. I'd give the address yeah. and then give a description of the two people involved. Okay. Um, I'm over, you know, you could say I'm aware of things to look for. And this sounds like this could be a trafficking situation. Yeah. Please get someone out here right away. Okay. So that would be the quick and easy. Yeah. Um, and also, um, if you all have your cell phone next to you, if you could just pull it out right now and put in the human trafficking hotline, I know mm. they'll probably put it on their website yes. as well. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it's one eight eight eight. Three seven three seven eight eight eight. So that is, you know, it's anonymous. If you don't have to give your information, you just need to give the information that you are witnessing. Yeah, um, and as much as possible. So look for characteristics. You know, obviously the place you're at. Mm -hmm. If you're at a gas station and you see people actually start to get into a car, get the license plate, get the make and model okay. of the car. And again, as many characteristics of the people as possible, yeah. man, woman, age, facial hair, tattoos, clothes, yeah. all of that. Okay. Um, that's the best thing you can do is give as many details as possible and then turn it to the authorities yeah. and let them go um, do their job. Okay. That's mm -hmm. great. What other things, Melanie, when we're, should we, what things should cause us to be a little like, uh, I don't know if that's right. Like, are there just other, a few other things that seem yeah. to be fairly common that we can just be a little yeah. more on the radar for that we're like, absolutely, okay, that might be not right. Yeah. So one thing is I'm sure all of us have been approached by someone asking for money or um, yes. sometimes uh, women alone, women that are alone. Sometimes they have a kid with them. Yeah. Um, they are often trafficked women that a pimp is with, is within, um, a close distance from okay. them and they're watching them and they're making them, they haven't possibly made their money quota for the day. And so they're making them now just go out and just ask for money. Okay. Okay. Um, so what most of us chuck up to, oh, they are vagrants or homeless yeah. or whatnot. Um, 
Not necessarily. Okay. Um, I would say, you know, use common sense. Obviously, if it's an older gentleman, um, yeah. he's not being trafficked. But if it's um, a young woman and possibly a, a woman with a child yeah. or a teen, um, then there's a good chance they're from a trafficking situation. Okay. And um, I sort of, <laughs> this is tough. I personally um, ask them immediately are you being trafficked? Okay. Is there someone, yeah. is yeah. there someone with you? Can I help you? Yeah. But again, that's not the usual direction because of safety. Right. Um, right. I of course have been in this for many years and I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. Um, but if obviously if you're not comfortable, it's probably best to go ahead and just, um, immediately get all of their statistics yeah. or, you know, their details yeah. and whatnot and go ahead and call Yeah. and call for help. Are there yeah. situations like, cause I know I've seen, um, like a 21 is yes. a big, mm-hmm. big, they are in Christine Australia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they'll put out video. I mean, all kinds of things trying right. to help people know, right. Um, even if their girls or boys who are right. being trafficked, some things that they could do to help somebody else know like this situation Are right. there other or any of those things. I, I'm not pulling, it's not coming to mind no, the most okay. recent thing I saw that I was like, huh, yeah, I that's really a thing. Um, that if we're at a mall or you're okay. somewhere else that right. like, if we, it, yeah, I mean, honestly, the most part, I guess the most common thing to look for is yeah. just people that are again at these stores or maybe they're hanging around a, a school, like a block from a high school yeah. or something. And, yeah. and you see someone and it can be men or women, yeah. um, pimp, Pimps look like everybody. They mm-hmm. don't have a specific look to them. They are all ages. Okay. And they look like regular people. Yeah. Um, but the clues that um, they're not just going for a leisurely walk, they have their eyes on the students walking out of the school. Yeah. They yeah. are not continuing with their walk. They yeah. are sort of pacing and looking and they're trying to find someone to recruit. Yeah. So again, back to that store, um, they're not really shopping for groceries. They are just perusing the aisles yeah. or um, you do, you overhear the conversations or maybe you're at, so maybe someone in traffic already. So you might be at a gas station and you see just two people or a few people that don't look right together. Yeah. Um, I recently was at a rest stop on a trip and I saw two teenage girls that were at the vending machines, um, looking for, um, treats and they were with, um, an older man and he just was kind of staying away, but watching. And so that type of situation, I kept my eye on it. I wanted to just see if the Holy Spirit spoke to me and also just feel out when you just get that vibe that something is off. So I just sat and, and sometimes it's, you have to go the extra mile. You have to, if you have to use the restroom, well, wait and just sit and watch the situation. If you have to get back on the road very quickly, no, saving a life is more important. Be 10 minutes late for your destination and sit and watch the situation. So I sat and watched. And, um, at first I felt like it was very suspicious. And then after a, a solid 10 minutes watching then other people come out of the car and the other interactions that took place, I was now comfortable okay. that it was not a trafficking situation, Yeah, but it could have just, it could have been the other way. Yeah, And if it was, I would have done what I've recommended on here. I would have immediately called human trafficking hotline yeah. or 911 and to get some help in. Yeah. Well, I think it's just important. Like we said, just, just to be aware and to know what to look for and part of and, and the hope would be Hopefully we never have to necessarily do those right. things. And I, I don't want everybody like being paranoid. And now you're looking for everything and you're calling the hotline every other day. I mean, like right. find the balance, right? Uh, like, absolutely. Oh, but yeah. trusting. And I think it's like, yeah. it goes back to what you said. Just pray yeah. that there would be, absolutely. You know, that God would, he does that. And mm-hmm. that usually we all know, we've all can think of probably a situation where we've just been like, something's not right. Right. In that. any realm of things. And absolutely. just going, hey, maybe listen into that, just an extra step right. and figure out what you can do. Yeah. And also yeah. one more thing to watch for. Um, so if you do see two people, people that you just are getting that uncomfortable feeling that they don't look right. Um, also watch for clothes. Are they in non, the not 
proper season clothes? Are they wearing okay. winter clothes in the summer, summer clothes in the winter? Mm -hmm. Do they have bruises on them anywhere? Okay. Do they look malnourished? Um, do they possibly have a branding tattoo on them, which look like barcodes okay, and, or say daddy's such and such. Yeah. Those are some of the branding tattoos. So you can look for actual physical signs. Yeah. Um, and you can also sort of tell if they are not making eye contact with anybody yeah. that they look submissive to this person that they're with and, um, they're scared. You see fear in their eyes. Yep. Um, so um, again, listen to that intuition and review kind of their physical traits and what's going on yeah. and see if you can find any markers. That's great. So Millie, I want to switch just a little bit and yeah. you know, a lot of us have, you know, you know, my family, yeah. yes. I have four kids in yeah. my home, Absolutely. three. Well, let me, let me have you dispel this myth. Okay. There is a myth that I think sometimes people think it's only girls. No. That are, oh, can no. you just for a second speak yeah, to that sure. so that we just clear that up a little bit? Absolutely. So are teenage girls more common? They are, yes. But there was, boys are absolutely um, trafficked. So in other countries, in, in more of the third world countries and whatnot, mm -hmm. it is a situation where um, they might be sold from their family because the family thinks that they are getting a better life and people are adopting them and giving yeah. them schooling, but really they're not. Yeah. Um, they're putting them in... in orphanage and I'm doing air quotes mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Um, but it's not, it, it's literally, um, literally pickings for traffic yeah. customers to come in and yeah. traffic them. Um, so in other countries, it kind of looks like that. It also looks like, um, you know, people are just desperate and poor and will do anything for to eat mm -hmm. and, um, or they're taken from their families. Yeah. Um, runaways. So in America, boys are trafficked more through runaway. Okay. So if you run away from home, um, within one out of seven kids is approached by a trafficker within 48 hours. Wow. So, um, and when you are, you know, d desperate to eat and you're given all these promises and whatnot, that's sort of how yeah. it starts. Yeah. Unfortunately. Um, so that's the number one part, probably in America, okay. the way boys are recruited. And then they are, are, of course, recruited the exact same way as girls are. Yeah. Um, getting manipulated online, mm -hmm. um, promises of money and wealth and um, jobs and whatnot. Yeah. And then, um, of course, um, what else did I want to say? I guess that's probably... Those probably okay, no, okay. those are probably top two. Yeah. yeah. Well, Melanie, mm -hmm. what what can we do? So, like, like I said, I've got kids in my home. Okay. A lot of our listeners are either um, younger than okay. themselves, and not that there's necessarily an age thing, but they yeah. fall in a category somewhere between eighteen and twenty five, okay. probably. Okay. Or their parents and have mm -hmm. children themselves, okay. or aunts and uncles. We probably most people listening, you probably all have somebody in your right. group. But like, what do we need to know? And mm -hmm. again, to operate with awareness, okay. not out of a spirit of fear. Correct. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, I don't want people, like, I know all this can be really triggering. I don't want people right, to be right. like, I have to be so afraid and I can't yeah. let my kids do anything. I can never, I mean, right. you got to find the balance and you everybody's going to know that for their right. own family themselves. Right. Um, but what do we need to know mm -hmm. to help be a little extra safeguard yeah. our, our kids? Okay. Um, start there. How, what, okay, what, sure. what should we know? What are some top things that we yeah. just need to help I think, know? I mean, number one, you do need to monitor their social media mm -hmm. and, um, you as their parent and they, as a minor have absolute control over that. Yeah. And, um, there needs to be safeguards Yeah, and, and be careful because sometimes the safeguards don't work. Mm -hmm. So I recommend, um, just a quick visual review yeah. of, and what's really important is their conversations mm -hmm. because a trafficker is going to go through a, a messaging system yep. of some yep. sort and whether it be Snapchat or, or the TikTok, but it's also, mm -hmm. it's always going to be sort of the messaging section of the app. Okay. And that's where you need to look um, yeah. and look back at these conversations and um, make sure they're appropriate because... Um, they might look appropriate and it might look like your kid is talking to a little uh, 15 year old boy and oh, how cute. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's not the case. Yeah. So, um, number one, monitor their, um, their phones and, yeah. and computers and whatnot. Um, 
Gosh, there's so many. Number two, make them aware. Like you all as a family have to decide what age is best. Yeah. And um, once you are comfortable with that, I mean, you can even start giving tips from a very young age um, or starting with a very young age Mm -hmm. um, safety tips. Mm -hmm. And then as they get older, you can incorporate um, more details so that they are more aware. Um, These teenagers, they need to know that this is how you're manipulated, that don't be fooled by someone saying they're a kid. Don't be fooled that they have uh, 50 of the same friends in common as you do. Because that is the easiest thing in the world for a trafficker to get past. Yeah. They just friend a million people yeah. and then all half of them say yes. And then boom, it looks like you have yeah. 50 to hundred friends in common and you as a teenager think they're safe. Yeah. And that's, that's really common among teenagers. They always say, well, we had a hundred friends in common. Yes. So, um, be really leery of that. Yeah. Can you yeah. pause just there for a moment? Yeah. Like how, what's other good language or ways we share it with our kids because you know okay. it's a hard line and, yeah. and everybody's got a different relationship with their kids and right. I, even in my three girls or the, the two mm-hmm. that are old enough and that right. have a little more phone privileges because right. of their age um the conversation is even very different between their personalities and what right. they want to do and we have to say a lot of those things are just going hey just because there's 50 friends one of our things we talk about and you mm-hmm. can tell me if this is right or not is i don't want you having any friends on social media if you have never met them if in you person. have never seen them yeah. in person and you know yeah. exactly who they are yeah you don't need to have them as a part of your social media at this age and i know not everybody listening might agree with what right. that stance yeah. but for us and for will and i that's right. part of what we said as a family right but can you give some other just for us as parents or aunts and uncles mm-hmm. or grandparents language to help that that kids might hear better or to talk okay. about just how right. do we talk about the safety part? How do we make it? Hey, okay. we're not trying to restrict you for restriction's right. sake. Right. We're trying to do it because we need you mm-hmm. to know this is yeah. serious and, and, and right. they can get to you very, very right. easily and they will pose and hide on all kinds of things they will. in a lot of different ways. Yeah. I think um, what's most important is kind of your, what you guys do with your kids. Yeah. Um, a hundred percent, everybody, that should be the rule for a minor. If you have not met them in person, they should not be a friend and mm-hmm. you should have all private accounts. Yeah. I am truly shocked at how many kids have public accounts. Yes. Um, it's sad Yeah. and it's wrong. Mm-hmm. And so number one, all private social media. Mm-hmm. And number two, only friends that you've seen in person. And I know that might seem like overkill, but if you want that guarantee that your child is not talking to um, a trafficker that has slid in, yeah. um, that is that is your way that yeah. you're going to have sort of that affirmation. Yeah. So um, and those kids do top it. two. Let me just, I want to yeah. say, because I know this is really mm-hmm. hard and, and you are right. very good, Melanie, about none of us are here to give you parental, right. like, what you need, you have yeah, to make no, a decision for no. your family. Yeah. But I will say in my experience with mm-hmm. my kids and my experience with working mm-hmm. with teenagers and different right. ages and myself growing up, right. um, we lie sometimes. But right. Like, yep. I remember yep. back in the day, I'm going to date myself. It was the messenger chat rooms. Okay. I was not allowed to be in those chat yes, rooms, but, but 100% you were. Right. I would go in them because it was intriguing. And so yeah. our kids, and again, we love them in the best yeah. of intentions and right. we want to, we want to have trust with them. Right. But sometimes there's just right. things they do yeah. that are, you're not always aware of. And so I think really asking right. the questions and having really upfront conversations yeah. with your kids. You need um, to. That again, from a, a heart of, this is not to be mean. This is not right. to limit you on all the stuff. This right. is for your safety because we are right. responsible for you yeah, I <laughs> and think, want to help. Yeah. With teens, especially, um, I, I always want to sort of take it back to the foundation of teaching them about their identity in Christ. Yes, that's good. And, um, and I, there are, and sadly, I mean, not sadly, but there are, there is proof that, um, the kids that are at home and and feel loved and have a mm-hmm. wonderful relationship with both parents um they don't those statistics aren't as high uh-huh. it is yeah. it is kids that um are not as paid attention to mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and they have busy parents and yeah. maybe they have moms and dads that aren't super comfortable or know how to encourage and yeah. and really reinforce that love and and who you are and even mm-hmm. if you don't have a faith foundation 
um, having that amazing relationship, trusting deep relationship with your family members. Yeah. Um, that is just so important because again, if we look at the numbers, it's not there. So to me, yeah. I'm always going to say, start with their identity and who they are. And, and, and we have to build up these young people yeah. to know that they don't need these outside, um, just these outside compliments and mm-hmm. um, affirmations and whatnot. They know who they are. Yeah. So beyond that, obviously, um, to me, give real life examples mm-hmm. because kids need more than a lecture. Yeah. You need real life examples. Um, one thing you could say is that some there is someone in their school that's either been trafficked or has been approached mm-hmm. to be trafficked. So you can start with that. There is a child in your school, yeah, a hundred percent that has already gone through this experience. Mm-hmm. And I know that because I mentor them and they, yeah. <laughs> they yeah. go to these schools, yeah. they go to yeah. local schools everywhere. Um, so you could start with, I think they just need tangible proof mm-hmm. because you keep throwing out numbers and stats. They're kind of like, eh, yeah. and it kind of goes in one ear and out the other. Right. So proof. And as for language and vocabulary to use, um, again, based on their age and the, how comfortable the family members are, yeah. I think being as honest as possible so that they know what sex trafficking looks like and yeah. if they were to be recruited into this, what their day would look like. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'll, again, offer some information on your site yeah. and for you all to look over, but um, the day, your day wouldn't look pretty. Okay. Um, yeah. The, unfortunately, you know, kids are used sexually up to 30 times a day. Wow. So, um, yeah, I think tangible real life experiences and, and some proof so that they can really believe it. Yeah. No, that's yeah. good, Melanie. Okay. And again, I know it's such a hard subject, but it's one that I feel like does need to be mm-hmm. talked about. I've learned a lot from you, even just on some stuff you've said mm-hmm. some things. Sometimes I'm like, hmm, we need to go back and re- yeah. <laughs> think that through with our, yeah. our kids. And again, I just want to keep saying, because I feel like it's so important. It's not out of the spirit of fear, no. but no. it's just, just man, truth. be wise and, yeah. how, and can, how can we help? Yeah. So Melanie, I know you'll share with us more resources. Yes. I want you to talk for just a minute, because the time always goes by yeah. way too fast in all these shows. Yeah, it's easy. Um, it, it, it is fun. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about mm-hmm. what God has been doing lately and what yeah. the ministry you said it's pursuit. Okay, it's Tell called, us what's called. Yeah, pursuit 3416. And Love the it. reason we named it that was because we are pursuing Ezekiel 3416. Okay. And Which Ezekiel is? 3416 <laughs> is um we will search for the we will search for the lost and bring back the strays. Mm-hmm. We will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong we will destroy. We will shepherd the flock with justice. Love that. And that's just kind of like what we're all about. Yeah. And so our hope is to go into schools, organizations, medical offices, everywhere, and just bring more and more awareness so Mm -hmm. that we can stop this before it becomes trafficking. Mm -hmm. We can make everybody aware. And also we will train people on what to look for and how they can help um, maybe a niece or a neighbor that they're seeing the signs that we've taught them in our class. Um, So it's not just for people or parents with kids. This is for everybody. Mm -hmm. Every single one of us can help. We just have to learn what to look for. Yeah. And so our awareness class will teach what to look for and they will be different based on if we're at a school mm-hmm. or if we are at an organization, a doctor's office, et cetera. Yeah. And it's, it's new. Um, we just became official last week. Our articles of incorporation love it. I love it. are in. And yeah. so we can proceed forward with um, setting the rest of it up and getting the training going. That's great. Well, we'll make sure to link any and everything and Thank we can you. update this too as we go yes, along. Absolutely. Absolutely. To Please. put it on there. And so if you are an educator or you fit in one of those categories right. that Melia was talking about, reach out and yes. see how this really important ministry can come alongside and help because prevention yes. and awareness is is huge. Yes. Um, so Melanie, for people listening right now who are like, I, I want, I, I've, they're feeling that pull that you mm-hmm. had. I want to yeah. help. Yeah. I want to do something. Um, maybe I have time to give. Maybe right. I have financial resources right. to give. Can you just tell us real quick and we'll have yeah. all of it in the show notes, but yeah. how, what's a few things we could do right now okay. to get more involved? Absolutely. So I always give the easiest thing you can do is yeah. go on online and literally do a search that says the name of your town. Mm-hmm. So let's just say yeah. Baldwin, Missouri, yeah. you know, 
Um, human trafficking organizations, Baldwin, Missouri. Okay. And it can be use keywords, organizations, charities, ministries. Yeah. And then I promise you, um, loads will come up and you, and if you're not seeing come up for a specific town, obviously go to the large town, St. Louis, Missouri, for yeah. instance, Kansas yeah. city, Missouri, Las Vegas, Nevada, et cetera. Yeah. Go to the largest city near you okay. and put that in and there are loads of um, ministries and, and organizations trying to help with this. And it's not enough, though, as you can see. Yeah. Still second yeah. busiest, you know, most profitable business in the world. Yeah. So we need as many ambassadors as possible yeah. to stop this. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's just the easy one. And, and pr- I promise from that research... You will have so much that you have to sift through and yeah. decide. So um, start there. If you have specific questions, you are welcome to email me. Okay. It's pursuit3416 at gmail.com. Perfect. Yeah. And we'll link all that so people can find it. Please do, because like I said, when you feel that pull and tug, yes, this is a great way for us to kind of yeah. wrap up the conversation, Melanie, because um, we talk about that often here on the podcast. And something Will and I are super passionate about is God has put inside of us all passions pullings, all the stuff yeah. and lean into that. And that can look like anything. How mm-hmm. it looks for you is different how it looks for yes. me. And God needs all of every one of us. He's given us unique gifts mm-hmm. and abilities. We all need to use it for his glory and right. for the kingdom and to help share good things and yes. great things as we can. Yeah. Um, can you just give any final encouragement to somebody yeah. who's struggling with, hey, I'm not sure what I'm really mm-hmm. gifted at, or I'm not right. sure how to use that. Can you just yeah. share a little more encouragement Goodness, with someone? Um, I just, I do want to encourage you all that if God can take an ordinary mom Mm -hmm. like me and show me how to live this out, he Mm -hmm. can absolutely do it for all of us. So beyond prayer, um, just literally think about those simple gifts and a couple examples. What if you are a mom and you think you are just running kids all day Mm -hmm. and you don't have gifts. Well, were you a cheerleader as a teenager? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can teach cheer and some subtle tumbling to kids in need. Um, Are you... Do you know how to play the guitar? Maybe you can go entertain at retirement homes and just organizations that need talent Mm -hmm. um, in order for their fundraisers. Yeah. Um, I promise every single tool you have in your box can be used. If you are a expert organizer, then by all means, contact some charities and some ministries and just tell them that they don't have time to organize their donation closets. They don't have time to organize their offices. Go offer to do that for them. And you're a human. You can clean. (laughs) Help to clean. I promise any tool you have can be used to glorify God and help an organization. I love it. And you can attest from your organizations you work with. I mm-hmm. can attest yeah. from the ones I've worked yeah. with. There's no nonprofit ministry organization right, right now twiddling their thumbs and going, no. we have more workers than we could possibly <laughs> right. use. We have more resources. We have more right. They all have a need. So find something that you're passionate about and, Absolutely. and figure out how you can get involved. Um, yes. And God's going to use that big to not only be a blessing to yeah. that ministry, but the crazy thing is yeah. God often uses it to bless us more and Absolutely. grow us. And yes. it's, it's amazing. So for sure. Well, Melanie, um, is there anything we didn't talk about that you do, that you want to say <laughs> or want to talk no, about that I, you didn't hit? Goodness. I think we covered it all. I, um, I love it. Gosh, there's so much okay, to well, it. The, yeah. the last thing we ask everybody, mm-hmm. and I always say like, there's no qualifier, but because the show is yeah. called Now That's Something Good, yeah. tell us one more. You've already shared so many good things, but yeah. share one more Good thing yeah. just going on in your world or um, product or okay. I don't, it can be anything. Some people are like it doesn't even need yeah. to be spiritual. Like no, it can be whatever you want. Okay. To. Can I do two? You can absolutely okay. we will allow it. Okay. So I want to recommend a book. Yeah. It's called Heaven by Randy Alcorn. Okay. And I recommend it because so many of us um, are sort of unclear of what happens to mm. these earthly bodies when we yes. go to sleep forever and leave this earth. Yeah. And he does a really wonderful he has a great way of explaining it very clearly. Okay. So I think you, if you've ever questioned that, I think you'll find some answers there. I love so, that. I love um, that. Yeah. So that, and then, um, uh, my second recommendation is about a cafe. I love cafes <gasps> and Sarah knows yes, that. Tell me how <laughs> we not ridiculous. talk about that. I feel like we missed a oh whole, my gosh. we could have talked for yeah. like three hours about all the yeah. fun things that 
a oh, goodness. Okay, yeah, so I what love, cafe do okay, you recommend? I have a cafe, a cafe recommendation. Okay. So if you are local to St. Louis, it's in Lake St. Louis okay. and it's called Huga. And um, it's in the meadows. Okay. And it's actually more of a smoothie bowl cafe and <gasps> juice cafe. Wait, what? I do not it, know. It, that. Are you you're serious right now? Love it. it. The decor is awesome. The vibe is awesome. Oh. And the smoothie bowls are awesome. I'm going as soon as we hit stop on yes. this. So, <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, I don't work there, but no, <laughs> I enjoy their bowls a lot. And I just want everybody to go enjoy them as much as okay, I do. Okay. So, what do you get there? Is what I need to I know. Get, um, I get a smoothie bowl. And, and so, you start with like a fruit base, and then I yeah. add protein, and you can add a couple items. So you can add all kinds of fruit, you know, yeah. um, chia seeds and all kinds of coconut, great stuff that you want to make it Love like it. a yummy bowl. But I know that there is a ton of juices and I know, um, juicing is important to a bunch yes. of people nowadays. Yep. And so they also offer, um, I think a huge selection of juices. I have not tried okay. that yet, but I can attest that if you get one of their smoothie bowls, you will be happy. I love it. Well, <laughs> I'm really going to try that out. And that's really dangerous that you just told me that because thankfully there's not been a place like that super close to I know. because I have an addiction to things like that. Me too. And when it's quick. It's ridiculous. Okay, so I do have to ask more quick because yes. there's a whole part of Mel, like Melanie is a world traveler <laughs> and I'm not, we could do oh, a whole other podcast episode right. about all your world traveling. Yeah. So just, well, you can tell me a story okay. of that, but let me just do it this way. So okay. you're, you've been to Nashville a lot. Like let's just hit a couple, can you hit okay. a couple other cities okay. that maybe, I don't know where everybody that okay. listens from. There are a lot of people that are local yeah. to the area, but then there's people all over. Yeah, um, I know we have some friends in Colorado okay. that listen. Um, but tell yeah. me, like, what's one or two of your favorite Nashville places, and then just oh. hit off a couple other because of the cafe vibe. Like, where okay. are your favorite ones in America? I am- I have to apologize. I have lists. And so I don't memorize That's the okay. names of places. We can always Google search or yeah. find it and put it okay. in the show notes too. We but, can like Melanie's top favorite, okay. yeah, top I 10 will favorite cafes 100% of America. do that. Um, I will, I will say that, um, I have a lot of favorites in Nashville because my daughter used to live there. Yes. So we hit those a lot. I have some in Washington DC okay. because my son lives there yes. and we hit those a lot. And then in St. Louis. So okay. I apologize for my lack of memory, but That's we'll right. definitely put it in the show notes. I have so many that have not just yummy coffees and drinks and food, yeah. but this, the essence, the vibe, the design is really cool. I love um, that. I have to say one thing I you forgot can, when yeah. you asked if I wanted to cover anything else. Yeah. Um, since you mentioned my traveling, yeah, I just kind of want to add that to the whole realm of glorifying God. Please do. Yeah. And I just want to say that he has just given me so many amazing experiences in my travels to, I, I won't go into the stories. I will just say that from uh, meeting a Muslim and an atheist on a mm. plane and having the most amazing discussion and, and, and time with them to, um, a lovely store clerk in Santorini, Greece and talking mm. to her about faith and, um, all of these and, and uh, beautiful elderly gentlemen in DC and Starbucks. I mean, there's just so many experiences. So I just want to say that like, again, you can glorify him in all ways. And yeah. if you pray over it, he will a hundred percent open your eyes on how to do this. And, and I just want to also say, this isn't a box I check or I don't walk into a store and go, how am I going to glorify God? Right, right. I do not do that. <laughs> right. um, it truly is organic and it can, it, in Greece, it started with a discussion about a bracelet and then it grew beautifully from there. And in my airplane experience, it was from a book on my lap and grew beautifully from there. So um, I have hundreds of more and I'll, I'll stop there and just yeah. say, um, glorify him in every single day. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Well, we'll just have to bring you back on because there's a whole lot of stuff that yeah. you didn't even, like the whole traveling thing <laughs> yeah, and yeah. maybe some of the fashion things. Yeah, I love we'll that too. We'll have to yes. come back and talk about it a bit. Melanie, okay. thank you so much for being yeah, here thank you. Today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining in with us today. Make sure to head over to the show notes to check out links to find Melanie's recommendations of some top spots to go around the country to visit. And then we share some more links that are around human trafficking and awareness so that you can get more involved or do further research or just figure out how you can get involved. We really appreciate you listening in. As always, you taking the time to go review the podcast episode or to really just share it with a friend that might benefit um, or be 
encouraged today is a huge blessing to us here at Now That's Something Good. So we hope you have a great week and that you'll join us back here next week for a brand new episode of the show. Go out and share a little something good with someone around you today. 